What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What Studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do you go? Where do I always send you? DJLittleRock.com. One more time, DJLittleRock.com. Check availability and get a free price quote, and maybe you can have me at your next event. You know what I've been booking lately? You know who I've been talking to lately? Brides, 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 and grooms, and grooms. <laughs> but you know it's mostly about the bride. Weddings, weddings, weddings are coming back, baby. That's right. The people need to break out of this coronavirus quarantine and get out and celebrate marriages and birthdays and all kinds of things. Still haven't had too many corporate events. Uh, you know, I think I had one corporate event over the last year. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think that's going to come back real soon, too, because the, the people need to get together. Especially, you know, they've been working from home. Do they even know who they work with anymore? Nope. <laughs> they don't even know what those people look like. They don't know what the office looks like. But at least you can get together at some kind of venue and maybe have some DJs and, you know, social distancing, dancing Maybe like line dancing, but the line is real distanced. <laughs> oh, it's crazy, I tell you. But the vaccine is here. Uh, cures are on the horizon. Hopefully things are getting better and better. And uh, this COVID-19 thing will be a thing of the past. And the people will be entertained once again. Speaking of entertaining the people, today on the program, I have Jim Blaylock, James Blaylock of the Cash Creek Band. Who's that? What? You don't know? Huh. You're going to find out more in the next few minutes, so stick around. This week's shows, well, as we're breaking out of the quarantine coronavirus, I have my one faithful show on Friday nights, The Rab in Conway, Arkansas. Put that on the What Makes You Famous walking tour. If you're ever in the Conway, Arkansas area, you want to do some karaoke? You want to sing? Yeah? You want to be feel like a star of the show? You can do that at the Rab on Friday nights with me. And now, uh, we were doing it from 7.30 to 10.30, but as of today, uh, they're allowed to stay open until 1 in the AM. So we're going to do the karaoke from 8 p.m. until 12.30 in the AM. Yeah, adding a little bit more time for you to have some fun. They have a full bar. The kitchen's open, pool tables. They have a pool tournament on Friday nights. So if you want to try your hand at playing pool and possibly make some money while you're waiting to sing a song on stage next to me, hey, you can do that at the Rab. They are asking that you wear a mask on the way in, uh, use that hand sanitizer, wear a mask when you're walking around. But while you're sitting down, having your drinky drinks and having your good food, you can pull the mask down so you can get at your eating hole. We're just trying to protect each other. You know, the scientists are telling me to put a mask on. Hey, I'm going to put a mask on. Why not? If it, if it allows me to go out and play for the people, I'm going to do that. So that's the RAB. Friday nights, 8 p.m. until, well, I guess they're open until 1 in the a.m., but we got to be on the other side of that door after uh, by 1 a.m. or else we're all going to jail. <laughs> all right. Speaking of people that work in bands and clubs and, and knows about uh, uh, you know working late nights, Let's give a talk to James Blaylock of the Cash Creek Band. And I got him on the Skype. So if you're listening to the audio version of this, I encourage you to check out the video version of this podcast. YouTube.com forward slash user forward slash Keys Dan. Or just look up Keys Dan on YouTube. You'll find three different YouTube pages. It's the one that has the Radio What.com logo right next to my name. That's the one that I've been saving for the podcasts and the radio stuff and such. All right, let's get into it with James Blaylock, Cash Creek Band, Skyping James Blaylock now. Hello, hello. Well, here we go again. James Blaylock, Cash Creek. How are you? Man, I, I got to know. I, I probably should have talked to you before I talked to Mercy Shine. Uh, you know, I'm trying to peruse. I'm trying to figure out. What is a Cash Creek? It seems like it's more than one thing. It's not a band. It's not just a band. It's not just a podcast. It's several things, man. Uh, now that I have you on the podcast, 
uh, James Blaylock, Cash Creek. What is a Cash Creek, and what is a James Blaylock? Uh, that's a good. That's a good question. <laughs> Um, but you know, with the nature of the business, Steve, these days, you got to have your, uh, your collective irons and a lot of fires. So, uh, yeah, Cash Creek is a band. And then we also have, um, Cash Creek, uh, Nashville, which is our, um, our label. And, um, and you know, everything that goes with that. Well, for the people that want to see your pretty face, if they're just listening to the audio version of this. I want them to check out the video version. Uh, flip on your video camera, man. Let's see. Uh, let's see the good looking oh. dude, man. Unless he's totally unkempt, he may not have. He may not have brushed well, his hair. <laughs> no, I can do. Vi I can do video. Yeah. You know, that's to your detriment, though. Probably. There he there is. You go. How's that? Man, he's he's a looker. <laughs> he's a looker. Check him out. Now I just got off a plane. Sorry. That's, that's what I was going to ask you. Uh, I heard you went to Nashville, or you were heading to Nashville. Uh, a couple days ago when, when first we, we talked for like right. 30 seconds, um, w why would anybody want to go to Nashville? Um, yeah, that's a good question. You know, you could go for the Nashville hot chicken. It's a popular item. Uh, you could go for the shine, you know, that's, that there's plenty of that there, or you could go for the music. Take your pick. <laughs> well, why did you, why did you, uh, James Blaylock go to, to Nashville? Uh, so once a month, the first Wednesday of every month, we do a show at the Music City Bar and Grill uh, in Music Valley, just outside of downtown Nashville there, um, that we call the Cash Creek Club Live. And uh, we bring in uh, a, a variety of artists. Um, some of them are on our label. Some are just friends that we know who've got other projects going on. And then we always try and bring in one, uh, one big headliner type star so this last one was uh tim rushlow from little texas come on that's fantastic and you do that what like uh what would this be the first second maybe the first wednesday of the month is that what it is it's the first wednesday of every month correct all right that was a guess on my part because i had to do a little yeah. bit of math you said you do it once a <laughs> month and yesterday was wednesday yeah. there you go <laughs> yeah first wednesday of every month next month we have um uh oh shoot what's his name heath uh is it heath wright from ricochet okay because the only heath i know right now is heath sanders he's out of arkansas i i find myself oh. currently in arkansas uh where do you reside uh i my home is northern california but i feel like i live on airplanes i understand sir i understand <laughs> i was a traveling uh, kind of guy myself for a for a while there but i I really wasn't doing a lot of airplane travel. I would have to haul my equipment on a little uh, minivan. And yes, I drove right. a minivan. Right. It's not de emasculating, uh, it, but it was just big enough to carry uh, the DJ sound equipment that I needed uh, when I was just going all tool, over the place. a tool for the job, right? That's all it was. <laughs> and then, yes, I picked up the kids from soccer, you know, right. uh, after yeah. I was done right. with the show. We all do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool, man. So you're in, in Northern California. What, whereabouts Correct. exactly? I uh, am in a little town called El Dorado Hills, just north of Sacramento. Okay. Okay. What kind of a town so, is that? What, if you're on the tourist bureau of El Dorado or El Dorado, because I know we have an El Dorado here in Arkansas, and that's how it's pronounced. You have to put the emphasis on the right syllable. So it's El Dorado down here. Uh, but right. I know we're, in, we're in Espanol. We yeah. have, the, we have the, the Mexican influence. So exactly. El Dorado. In Spanish. We are. Uh, yeah, we are, uh, we're the town that everybody stops in to get gas on their way to Tahoe. <laughs> we're, we're about halfway to Lake Tahoe from Sacramento. <laughs> Come on. There's got to be more to it. Be on the Tourist you know, Bureau you know. of El Dorado, uh, California. No, that's probably what the tourist bro uh, brochure says. Stop here for gas on your way to Tahoe. You know what's funny is uh, uh, Homestead, Florida, uh, where I'm, I'm from Miami. And I know, and, and then I lived in the Florida Keys, which is where Keys Dan comes from. Mm -hmm. And there's a 20-mile stretch between the south of Dade uh, County, Florida, Miami-Dade County, Florida, and then the first key, which is Key Largo, where I used to live. Right. And there's that 20-mile bridge. And then there was Jack's. Uh, it's like a convenience store and gas station just before you get on. And, and let me tell you, going down there, I had to have my Jack's hot dog before I took that stretch, you know, get your snacks, <laughs> get your snacks at Jack's 
and then go. Hey, that, that could <laughs> right. be a slogan. It had to be a slogan. But yeah, yeah, you should pitch it to them. So you're saying you're a pit stop on the way to Tahoe. I, I mean, do you spend time in Sacramento or in Tahoe? Uh, either, either of those places? Um, but well, we don't go down to Sacramento too much, but we do go up to Tahoe quite a bit. What's um, good about Tahoe and, then? Well, Lake Tahoe is Lake Tahoe. It's, it's beautiful. You got casinos, restaurants. Uh, the region that we're in is um, actually um, a bit of a, a winery region too. We've got several fantastic wineries out where we are. All so right. we, we spend a lot of time in our own backyard. I'm going to guess that some of the what makes you famous listeners are, are drinkers, you know, maybe uh, lushes. Uh, uh, possibly alcoholics. I don't recommend it. Uh, but uh, what, what's the the good drink in the area? Boy, we got a lot of great wineries out here. Uh, who probably one of the uh, most famous would be Bogle Winery. Uh, I know they are constantly uh, putting out a, a top notch product. Um, we've got Crystal Basin. I mean, you got you got wine and you got a ton of craft beer breweries out here too. Well, that's the spot. Okay, see now yeah. you're giving me more. For the Tourist Bureau. The brochure oh, also no. has wine on there. So no, we not. don't want the tourists going to those spots. We like those spots. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not much of a drinker. I spend some time in bars. I, I you know, a DJ every Friday night at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. I do the karaoke and the video dance party. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't drink. I had a half a beer one time when I turned 21 and I passed out. So I never wanted to have that feeling again. But I live vicariously through people that do drink and I, I see them I'm a, you know, on a social level. I see the people come in and go, all right, it's Friday party. And on the way yeah. out the door, uh, it's Friday party. <laughs> Take me Is home. It's still Friday. Take me home. <laughs> yeah. By the, yeah. By the time uh, they're done and they're locking the doors, it's Saturday mm -hmm. in the wee hours. That's mm -hmm. the life of a musician. BB King said it in one of his songs, uh, the life of musician. You go to work at 9 p.m. And right. then you, you know, you get out by the time the sun's coming up, you know, you're living the life of musician. Uh, tell me about it, James Blaylock. When did it all start for you? Wow. Um, so, so three of us in cash Creek have, uh, been playing music together in one form or another, in different groups with different artists since we were in high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we start, so I started when I was 16, uh, met Evil Forrest. He's the, uh, lead guitar player and one of the singers in Cash Creek, uh, in high school. And he turned around in history class and said, Hey, you want to learn how to play the bass guitar? And I said, sure. Why not? And I somehow ended up behind a drum set. See, that is cool. <laughs> and all born and raised in Northern California in the El Dorado right. area. Uh, no, actually, um. We came from a, an even smaller town called Pope Valley, which is just north uh, northeast of the Napa Valley, the okay. famed Napa Valley. Very famous. Okay, that is where you think about when you're thinking about uh, California wines. Is it sparkling wines? What? And and you say microbreweries as well. Oh man, the word right. brewery, brewery. Shoot. Right. <laughs> It's tough when you got an accent. <laughs> I like that one, man. I don't have an accent. You have an accent. No, I was talking to people for I talk to people from all over the world and they go, I don't have an accent. You have an accent. Right. Right. <laughs> I try to keep that middle American. When I when I first started broadcast school, it uh got the anything southern, anything, any kind of accent got drilled out of me. So uh I, I can talk with a twang. I'm here in Arkansas. I, I know how they speak, but uh I try to drill get all that drilled out. But California, man. Right. That's got to be cool growing up in the north of California. It's kind of an interesting state, man. They got things for everybody. I spent time in San Diego and Southern California all the way up to Bakersfield. I was doing parties back in 2004 or five, if I'm not mistaken. I was driving up and down uh, doing parties there. But uh, I, I know the, the farthest north, I think, was uh, San Francisco that I ever okay. got. And I, I did, you know, I didn't go visit Alcatraz, but I did go to the boardwalk. Uh, you know, but there's so much to see. Are there mountains where you're at? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we've got world-class skiing. And, you know, it's an hour up the hill from us, world-class snow skiing up there in Lake Tahoe. It's amazing. <clears throat> you can go to the yeah. beach and you can go to the, the mountain in the same state. Right. It's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I'm, 
I'm two hours from San Francisco, an hour from Lake Tahoe. Uh, we've got amazing mountains. We have beautiful beaches. We've got, you know, uh, Yosemite is, is about an hour and a half from me. Uh, I, I mean, it's, it's an at Northern California is absolutely beautiful area. Well, going back to the formation of the band, was it always cash Creek and what year was that? Uh, no, it was actually a band that was called silver Creek. Okay. Um, Why the switch? I, 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 Need I, that money? I, Get that paper. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so that started right around 1983, I guess. 1983. Yeah, I'm really old. Hey, I'm class of 86, uh, man. You rule. Uh, <laughs> what, what, what year did you graduate high school? 84. 84. I mean, we, we yep. chewed a lot of the same dirt musically. The 80s yeah, were the coolest. All, all 49 of my uh, senior classmates, we all graduated that year. Oh, okay. That is a small <laughs> school. I, 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 yeah. went, I guess I went to Western High School. It was the second graduating class that went all four years so it was a pretty new school but i think we still had uh, a good hundred or more uh graduating kids maybe even wow maybe even 400 but right. uh, you know and, and i keep up with a lot of them still I, is there anybody else that you keep up with that you still is it still tight knit because being from a small town do you keep up with a good portion of those people we do actually through through social media through facebook and twitter we actually stay in touch with a lot of uh, people that we went to high school with, which is a lot of fun. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's nice, man. This uh, this internet can be used for good. And we grew up in a time before the internet. Uh, you know, I'm, thankfully. I, oh, for sure. We know. <laughs> we know that we we answered phones without even knowing who the, who was on the other end. How right, are we that still was alive? Stuck to the wall. How are we still alive? Uh, it's a miracle. It is. It is. But you know, uh, growing up as a kid, besides being a band geek, maybe were were you in the band? Or, or, or were, you, were you doing other things? No, I was, uh, I was, I was a jock. Okay. I played sports. That's what I did. What kind of sports? Let's, go, let's do some sports talk. Uh, did you play oh, sports we, ball uh, with, the, the, uh, the with the goals football, and stuff? Baseball, basketball, wrestled. Okay. And you still look like you're in some kind of shape, man. So how do you, do you well, still keep uh, in shape? Uh, try, you know, try to get to the gym every once in a while? A, a sh shape is a good word for it. Okay. Rounds of shape. <laughs> Look at me. Yeah. Rounds of shit. I, I try, you, you know, it gets harder as you get older and, and with the pandemic. So this is the crazy thing with this pandemic going on out here in California. Cause it's, it's such a mess out here. Okay. Um, the majority of El Dorado County where I live stayed open. Mm. So a lot of the restaurants stayed open, that kind of stuff. But the only thing that closed was my gym. And I, I can't quite figure out why. I was going to ask why, but you can't figure out why. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Governor don't Newsom know. Still has got... The, the, <laughs> we've actually gotten the official word to open up you know, everything out here now, and my gym is still closed. Governor Newsom has gotten famous throughout this, uh, this last year. He really has. For all the wrong reasons. I, I would have not have known who the governor of California was yeah. if not for, for... I mean, all 50 states have become a test to mm -hmm. instead of being all united like most other countries are you know maybe a federal mandate hey let's try this let's try this no no every right. state you do what you want and you'll all be guinea pigs well you know well and that's the, you know that's the plus and minus of being a a republic yeah yeah so you know you, you get the good with the bad okay i mean uh, uh, well i mean let, let, if this is like really zooming forward but any covid problems uh, I don't know too many people around my scape that have, have had any really serious COVID problems. Uh, everybody in our band had COVID. Everybody. And we, I, all, we all caught it, yes. How'd you go through it? I mean, was it bad? Was it good? Is it uh, various? It, so it, it, it affected all of us uh, a little bit differently. Um, some of us, some, some of the guys got hit a little bit harder and, and were down for a little bit longer. Um, I was down for about 24 hours and, and then felt great. Uh, but yeah, we all, we all got hit. But the amazing thing is that my wife and son, uh, uh, actually all of my children have, none of them have, have tested positive ever. So I'm the only one who, who got it for them. Yeah. You got it. You, you went through it. 
Now you feel like Superman. Yeah. You got the antibodies. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, let's back up to the eighties. Totally eighties, man. I'm probably yeah. now that you're now that we're kind of in this eighties thing. I'm going to play a bunch of eighties tomorrow night and probably throw in some Cash Creek just to just to mix it up, man. Uh, Please do. Absolutely. I play. That's one of the jobs of a DJ is to play the new music. Play music from people from artists that are not on the Billboard Top Forty or you know, are, are, are not out on the radio stations in terrestrial ways, uh, you know, and then people will come up to me and go, wow, that's pretty catchy. Who is that? Well, that's Cash right. Creek. Look them up, find them, you know, and, and I like right. and We appreciate that so much. Uh, so many of the artists, you know, they're, they're, uh, are, they're fighting tooth and nail for any kind of radio airplay. And the fact that your, your internet stations, will take a much bigger gamble on somebody and put their put their music out there for the masses to listen to is fabulous. You know, I don't feel like it's a gamble. Uh, Radio What has always been music that I like. And if you like it too, right. there's a bonus. But I want to put up with it because that's the station I listen to. So I'll throw it on there. And if you're a new band, I'll put a tweet on it, you know, and, and let you know. And it gives you something to retweet. And it gives you something oh, to awesome. interact with. Uh, you know, it's a it's it's a nice tool. Once again, the internet can be used for good. I know Twitter and, and Facebook have had have been you know getting their shots over the last year as well. But uh, you know, all right, I really want to go back to the eighties, man. All right, when did you start forming? And who's playing? Give me a shout out of the people in the band once again, and what are they playing? And then what were the first uh, inclinations of? Uh, what was the the creek sugar creek or what, what was it? so silver creek silver creek there you go yeah. give me the beginnings yeah. uh so like i said uh i met chemo in high school and uh and started out learning to play the bass guitar and ended up behind the drum set um he uh had a neighbor who lived a little bit down the road from him named monty davida who then became the bass player uh and we had uh, uh, another high school classmate named Rick Collins, who was who was in the band also, who played rhythm guitar. So it was the four of us for a long time. Uh, so boy, when eighty uh, four, you start. Uh, when do yeah. you you start practicing? Who's got the practice area? And when did you feel good enough to get to that first gig? Uh, when did you break out? We all um, practiced at Kimo's parents' house. They were kind of the epicenter for this whole thing. It's nice to have uh, some parents in, in, that that support their kids. You know, the arts are are, are are so man. Those are the first things that are going to get taken out if if the budget is not there at schools. Right. They're going to go. Oh yeah, let's get rid of the music program. Let's get rid of that art program. No, you need that half of your brain, man. Well, it's not even so much that. It might be the one thing that keeps that kid hanging on. Yes. and hanging in school. You know, it's the one thing that piques their interest. It gets them going up and going every day. Yes. Yes. And that, that can make all the difference in the world. Um, I, I mean, we were, you know, you look back on it now and I, I am really grateful for um, his chemo's parents being involved as much as they were. I mean, his dad drove our bus. Uh, his mom was kind of our, our manager, pseudo booking agent. Um, they basically told us, you know, where we had to be, when we had to be there. And, uh, you know, we were too loud. <laughs> <laughs> I think of Huey Lewis in, uh, in back to the future. I'm afraid you're just too darn mm -hmm. loud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, you yeah. know, it's good. You had parents yeah. that not only were the parents, the, the band parents, but they were also the practice area and they were also the management as well. That, right. That, uh, got you your first gigs maybe. Uh, did you do right. some, what backyard parties, school dances? What, yeah. Oh yeah, we do? we would play anywhere, you know, any any place that that you know anybody wanted us, you know, like like any band starting out, you take whatever show lands in your lap, and uh, from there we worked our way up to uh, you know playing the fair circuit where you know we're doing uh, predominantly cover tunes, and eventually uh, that morphed into uh, starting to write some of our own material, learning how to be songwriters. Well, what's the covers, man? Uh, totally eighties or seventies, oh, sixties? Oh, where, where we going? Whatever, whatever the top hits were on the radio at the time. That's what we were trying to do. Okay. Do you remember the, the favorite songs, the go tos? People, people oh, need to get uh, playlists. So, so, just about anything off of uh, Alabama's Mountain Music album. Always country. 
Always country. Oh. It was always country. Yeah. Oh, all right. See, yeah. California, um, people don't think of that. You know, music is universal, but people don't think of that. Uh, they think of that California sound, beach music, uh, you know, Beach Boys, uh, even, right. uh, you know, even Van Halen because of the front man, uh, even though they, they came from all over. But, but yeah, yeah. Right. Or when they do think of country, they think of Buck Owens huh. because of Bakersfield, the Bakersfield sound, you know, and then Dwight Yoakam. Uh, but Northern California is, you could take Northern California and stick it in the middle of Arkansas or Tennessee or any of those Southern states and, and you're at home. That's, it's the same people. That's fantastic. And people are people yeah. all over the world. I don't know why there's so right. much. All right, let me get political a second. I don't know why there's so much division in this country. Everybody wants the same things, man. <laughs> you know? But, right. uh, you know, right. every, everybody likes music. If you don't like music, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, that's one of the beautiful things about music is that you can bring people who are who are are can be polar opposites on social issues or governmental issues, but they can go to the same show and they can love the same artist and they can love the same music. James Blaylock, Cash Creek, uniting the country, uniting the world. Yeah, music, why not? Man. One song at a time. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. So, all right, man. Uh, when did you start uh, breaking out of? Did you go? Did any of you go to college? The four of you? Uh, some of us went to college a couple times. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, me too. Uh, <laughs> me too. Went a bunch of times. <laughs> you know, never quite worked out. We kept. Uh, we kept. Even though, uh, so this would be, I guess, mid nineties. Silver mm -hmm. Creek broke up, and we all kind of went our our separate ways. Uh, Chemo made the move out to Nashville at that time. Uh, what did he end up doing when he was out in Nashville? Was he pursuing a career solo? Uh, not necessarily a solo career. Just he wanted to be, you know, he was looking to get on a touring touring act. That's the place you ought to be. I guess if you're going to do country yeah. music, go to Nashville. Yeah. Go, go to, yeah, go, go to where the business is. Well, people think uh, of California as a music and films and everything really entertainment, uh, well, but maybe more in the South. You know what? Nashville has kind of become a central hub for every type of music. Okay. I did not know, you know that. I'm learning these things as we go. Yeah, it, it is still the uh you know the 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 central clearinghouse for country music per se, but uh, but if it, every genre, every genre of music is located in Nashville and the business for it is located in Nashville. It is, you know, th there's still some uh, there's still some of a music scene down in Los Angeles in the pop and the rock world, but it's not as dominant as it as the uh, is in Nashville now. I mean, the the business of music has moved to Nashville. Okay, well, James Blaylock uh, from '84 to mid '90s when you were with Silver Creek was that primarily in the Northern California? Were, were you playing? Oh, we we played everywhere, everywhere, we went anywhere. Meaning, yeah, we went anywhere. Meaning what? Did you tour bus or planes or? Yeah, we had an old, yeah, we had an old bus, and uh, Chemo's dad would drive us, and we'd we'd uh, we'd go up and down, you know, north to south, east to west, you name it, we'd go. Well, I mean, what are the big what are the big places that you enjoyed? That uh, was it festivals or was well, it? We played a lot of a lot of the fairs, a lot of the fair circuit. Well, I mean, for anybody uh, you know, starting out, clubs. anybody starting out, and they want to follow the Cash Creek, uh, you know, line of how to make it big. Uh, you know, where, where do you go? How do you, how do you get booked on festivals? Boy, that's a good question. Okay. When you find out, let me know. Okay. Well, who's, <laughs> who was booking you for fairs or were you doing the blues brothers way and showing up to Bob's country bunker? And right, saying, yeah. yeah. We're the blues old good boys uh, band. Uh, we, we had, uh, we worked with several different booking agents and, uh, and they would all, you know, like I said, Chemo's mom was kind of our, our pseudo manager booking agent for us. She handled that part of it. So we would, you know, we would send out all the promo material and do the auditions and we would, you know, we, you know, we were nice boys. People way, would book us. way before the internet, you know, do you have a street way before team? the internet? Do you have a street team that's handing out flyers? How, how are you getting the word it, out? Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it was, it was the old fashioned word of mouth. It was the, uh, re, you know, record a, a demo tape and send it out. It was putting your face in front of somebody at a, at a fair, you know, that you knew was doing the booking saying, Hey, this is what we got. This is what we're doing. You can see us at this place, you know, and that's, and, and we were playing what they wanted, you know, as a cover band, you, mm -hmm. you're just playing the, the hits, you know? So that's what we gave them what they wanted.
Well, I'm on terrestrial radio since 86 on and off. And I remember getting a lot of, uh, you know, if there was a festival in town, I would have to mm-hmm. spend, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes with them on the morning show or on the afternoon mm-hmm. drive or whatever show I was mm-hmm. on. And they'd sit in front of me and talk about whatever they, they were doing. Did you do a lot of radio right. or? We, we weren't doing a lot of radio because we, at that time, we weren't really an original act like we are now. We were, you know, primarily a cover band. Um, really still learning our chops, okay. learning how to, how to play music and how to be a band. Okay, but you finally came it came all together. Did you get any recordings out of that? Were you signed with anybody, or did you get the we inkling? Didn't, we, we didn't sign with anybody, but we did. Uh, we did a couple of a uh, couple of indie albums, you know, that we we produced ourselves. And, uh, and let the people actually, know. Yeah, let the people know how, how, how that was here. done back in the nineties. Uh, you were burning oh your own CDs. <laughs> yeah, no CDs. This was still tape. You know, tape and vinyl. All the kids, all these hip hoppers that think mixtape, and then they hand you a CD or they or they give you something right. digital. What's a mixtape, honey? Mm. Right. Yeah, Grandpa. Yeah. What's a mixtape? <laughs> Tell the people what a mixtape is. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's you know that's actually how we got a lot of our material was you know you, you'd uh, re- you'd record the top forty countdown onto a onto a cassette tape, and yeah. then you'd wear that tape out, learning those songs over and over and over. Picking them apart and learning the parts. Oh, and when you're making a tape for your girlfriend, you don't want the DJ's voice to get on there. So you try to wait right. until the DJ stops talking. Hey, record. No, yeah, right. I'm sure I'm on a lot of mixtapes. Ha, I'm on them. <laughs> <laughs> you're a popular man. <laughs> oh, I'm sure, man. I, I know. Okay. There was a time I was doing commercials back in the uh, mid to, early to mid 2000s. I was doing commercials that were nationwide. And when I did those drives across country, I would listen to the radio stations and invariably from town to town, hey, I hear my voice uh, talking about this radio, this uh, car company. And what it is, it, I, if, on a commercial, there's it's a thing called a donut. And there's like a, a song and then a space for you to talk and then the song. And, and uh, the space for you to talk is, you know, Jimmy's Chevrolet, Fred's uh, Nissan, you know, all these, right. it's just plug in, whatever. And I'm listening right. to myself all across the country. But all right, let's go back to to Cash. Oh, to Silver Creek before you you got to Cash Creek. So you you uh, you do you have any of those tapes still? Uh, we got a few of them floating around. Yeah, I've I've got them. Uh, the ones that I have, I actually my wife uh, actually uh, went and put in a nice frame for me so I can stare at it and say, yeah, I, I have vinyl. Yeah, but did you digitize you know. them and put them up on the YouTubes or the SoundClouds? Oh, boy, I don't think so. Oh, I don't think we have. You got that to. might be a good idea, though. For nostalgic sake, more content for people. I mean, maybe right. you don't want people to know what the, you know the beginnings. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, anybody that's listening to this podcast from the beginning, all right, it's getting a little better. It's getting a little bit better as, right. as, as it right. goes. But it, the same thing with you guys. You were learning your chops right. back in the 90s, in the, in the 80s and early 90s. You finally, when, when do you feel you, you had it all together and you started writing your own songs? And who's doing the writing? Oh, uh, well, so, uh, Kimo and Monty do a lot of writing. We also, um, uh, uh, know a lot of songwriters, uh, you know, in Nashville. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, one of our favorites is, uh, a gentleman by the name of, uh, Jody Harris. Uh, another one's, uh, Corey Barker. And then uh, a gentleman that we just that was on our Cash Creek Club live show last night, uh, Rusty Van Slyke, uh, or Rusty Van Sickle, sorry, Rusty Van Sickle, uh, is uh, who's a phenomenal songwriter and singer. He is he's an amazing singer as well. Uh, so we get we get we look we look for songs that fit our style, what we feel is our style. Well, James Blaylock, I, I'm glad you're giving credit where credit is due. And I did peruse a little bit of the uh, YouTube page you have, the CCB Nashville YouTube mm-hmm. page that you have. And it's a mixture of music. It's a mixture of your podcast, your own music, mm-hmm. but you're also promoting other people's music. That is right. one thing that I need. If anybody takes anything away from any of the podcasts that I do, when I got into radio, yeah, y- you make a-, a few bucks an hour. But mostly it's to promote other people, to get the word mm-hmm. out about other things. Yes, if it's a, you know, commercials for, for big things or, or the show that's happening tonight. Hey, 
Cash Creek is playing tonight at blah, blah, blah. Let's get the word out. You're helping right. other people. And that's one thing that you're doing using your YouTube. You're not just helping yourself. You're helping your other people. And that's how we get ahead is by helping each other along. What do you think? Uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, the music business is, is also a large community. And you have to, within that community, you have to build your own community. You, you need your own support group in, inside that community. Uh, you have to be, you know, you, you the, the big thing is in, in any business is you don't know who that person you're talking to at that time knows. Yeah. And they might run into somebody at a coffee shop somewhere or, you know, in a restaurant or at a grocery store and say, hey, I was thinking about you the other day and I know these guys and you should listen to them. Absolutely, man. Going through you know. the, uh, the radio station that I was working at, uh, people would would uh, always hand me their tapes or their CDs eventually, uh, you know, albums at first, right. uh, and right. they would say, hey, play this, and I would go, okay, and I would take a yeah. listen to it, and then I would put it on the air. Well, one song that I put straight out without even listening to was like uh, Midnight Oil's Beds Are Burning. Uh, that one, oh. <laughs> uh, you know, back in 87, somebody said, yeah. hey, play this record. I went, Okay, boom, straight on the air. Now, it was college radio, so I can get away with it, you know, playing right. whatever I want. I said, hey, any curse words? Now, that was the only, that was the only stipulation. Any curse words? Right. Right. Okay, right. let's put it out there. And it was a fantastic song. And let me tell you, those four people in their dorm rooms that were listening, they got excited. Yeah. And they called. <laughs> the, the phones lit up, man, at three in the morning. Yeah. The phones lit up. Uh, I'm sure the writer of that song is still collecting royalty checks. Oh my goodness! I think yeah, I just that gave was another. a huge hit in the day. Oh, for sure! I just played uh, their video. I, I do video dance parties. I played their video last Friday, man. I I said, oh, I got to play this one. Uh, one of the greatest videos ever made, you know. And and, and I remember right. when when MTV used to play music videos. That was a thing, man. Uh, you know, it you, was. You, it, video killed the radio star. Well, it didn't. It made it better. It made them. It made it enhanced them. Not only could you hear them, right. but you could see them. Were you making at least little music videos with Silver Creek at all? Anybody filming you? Oh, well, we got lots of film. I mean, Kibo has a whole box of, of, of really awesome videotape of, you know, people shooting video of us at shows, at parties, whatever. And, and a lot of it is us just goofing around being, you know, being stupid kids. But, um, but no real... I don't think there was any real music video at the time. It was, you know, I remember at the time to shoot a real music video was expensive. Absolutely. Because you, all right, now with, uh, you know, Adobe Premiere or uh, the Apple's uh, final cut, you can take, um, all right, a, a music video is made. Couple, and, uh, it, a like, couple of iPhones. Exactly. And you're on your way. Exactly. But a music video primarily is made, say, three scenes. You have one scene where the band is on stage. You record right. the whole, uh, you know, them lip syncing to the song all on stage. And then another one, they're at a swimming pool. Then you record them, the whole song at the swimming pool. Right. And then maybe right. they're in a forest. Oh, okay. You record the whole song on a forest. Bam. Right. You take all three of those tracks and you start cutting and pasting which ones you want, you know, what scene. Right. And it all goes yeah, nice and easy. <laughs> but right. you had to do it with videotape machines before. And even before that was film. Ah, right. It, what a pain in the butt, man. What a pain in yeah, the butt. No kidding. We, uh, we are very fortunate to have uh, become friends with um, the guys in Lone Star. And their drummer, uh, Keach Rainwater, has a uh, uh, video company. He shoots videos. He produces and shoots videos for, for other people. And uh, he, we've been fortunate to have him uh, do a couple of our videos for us. And I am always amazed at how hard he works. Yeah. Yeah. Once you're done with your four or five hours of lip syncing the song a few times right. and recording it, and then it's a day, two days. Oh, I, I guess you could do it pretty quickly, but to get a good product, you got to take your time. Right. You got to, you got to like, it's like anything else. You got to, you got to put the elbow grease in. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I'm, once again, you're giving credit where credit is due. Uh, rainwater. Perfect. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Keith rainwater. Great guy. Fan of Lone Star, and and I like their right. stuff too. I'm amazed by them. <laughs> I'm amazed by them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we had uh, we just had Richie McDonald on the 
he was last month's Cash Creek Love Stop, uh, Cash Creek Live Club uh, superstar that we had. Richie McDonald came out and sang. Of course. Right. Tell me about that. Tell me about Cash Creek Club because I'm seeing every every other video. Sometimes there's a lot of them uh, that are Cash Creek mm-hmm. Clubs. What is the Cash Creek Club? And then we'll go back to to when uh, Silver Creek uh, took a falling out, and then eventually. Um, I don't know. Spoilers. Did it come back together? No. Uh, what, what is the Cash Creek Club? So the Cash Creek Club is kind of a it's kind of a music variety show. Uh, first Wednesday of every month, uh, we have a lineup. Of, of course, we do three or four of our own songs. We're, we're kind of the hosts for the show. And then we bring in uh, a, a anywhere from three or four. Uh, artists, uh, different country artists, and and they're always country. It's always country music. Uh, we have uh, a, so we we have somebody uh, like Art. We'll have somebody like R.T. Johnson on, who's got a, a, a great song out right now uh, off the CCB Nashville label. Hey, uh, you're turning and, me on or, to some new bands. I, I, I yes. gotta I gotta start writing these down when I listen. There back you to go, R.T. Johnson, and he's got a he's got another single that's going to be coming out here in a couple of weeks, and that song is absolutely fantastic probably his best work excellent um and then we also had um this uh, husband and wife duo who are on a bluegrass label i believe they're they're i believe it's on redbird i think is their label i, I might be wrong there but they're called the rollers okay and uh i'll tell you what kaylee roller has a phenomenal voice and her husband is the, uh, the fiddle player and guitar player in Cash Creek. Mm. He's the fourth guy. Uh, her husband, Jason, he is a phenomenal player. And the two of them together, just they, they have uh, something really special when it comes to making music. Well, James Blaylock, first Wednesday of the month. And is it always the same venue? What venue is it? Always the same venue. Music City Bar and Grill. Okay, and where's that located at? It's on uh, Music Valley Road. It's right uh, across the street from the Grand Ole Opry. <laughs> you know, we have uh, a place called called Midtown. Wait, no, wait. It's a uh, TC's Midtown, and it used to be. I just learned this maybe a month ago here in Conway, Arkansas. It used to be called the Grand Ole Opry West, and I was like, oh, yeah, 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 how from cool the, old, is the old Grand Ole Opry West White Radio Show, and it was right here in Arkansas, man, right down yeah. the street, and right now it's still. A great live, it's primarily, I'd say it's more rock and roll, although they yeah. do have like 80s cover bands that walk through, and there's a, a band that goes through called uh, uh, Sloppy Kiss, and yeah, <laughs> they, they wear the makeup, but none of the outfit, so it's real ah, sloppy, okay. but they play a lot of Kiss <laughs> kiss music, and, and then there's Dirty, Dirty Lindsay, they play hair bands, but yeah, that used to be the Grand Ole Opry West, man. I've I've never been to Nashville. I've been to Memphis quite a few times because, well, Elvis, hello, and right. and Sun Records, and and I've been to uh, to uh, Stax Stax Records as well. I mean, just a lot of history there, uh, right. the feelings. But uh, you know, I've never been to Nashville. My mom, she just moved from Key Largo. She's in the process of moving just south of Nashville. So I need to make a trek over there so I can see. You got to make a trek. You got to make sure you do the Ryman tour. Ryman tour there. I do the Ryman tour. Yeah. That's a, that if you, if you want uh, to get a good chunk of country music history, you, you go do the Ryman tour. It is uh, very in depth and it, it's a lot of fun. Walking tour, bus tour, headphones, Walk to- walking tour, walking tour. See, put that on the, what makes you famous walking tour, the Ryman yeah. tour. All right. Now yep. you've explained cash Creek club the events but i'm talking about cash creek club the videos the three guys on a davenport that are uh you know just monkeying around talking about uh music and such yeah that's uh so that's what we call our web pod cast episode because we couldn't agree on one name so we threw them all together yeah. uh, that's basically us just being us Dig it, man. That's all it is, you yeah. know. Um, yeah. And that- it's a way for us to uh, just kind of stay in contact with our fans through through social media and let them know the things that we're interested. What are we talking about? Whether it's uh, you know we're all three huge NASCAR fans, so we talk about you know uh, NASCAR racing and dirt bikes, and we do this thing called uh, the Squatch Report. We talk about Sasquatch sightings. 
saw that. And, and did you yeah, get your and, Did you get uh, your Sasquatch tag? Uh, by By the way, not no. I, I I'm trying to figure it out if you have to, if you actually have to be a resident of Oklahoma or not. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Well, from what I understand, in Hot Springs, Arkansas, we have a Boggy Creek monster that I think is a close relative to the mm. Sasquatch. Yeah, could be. Well, you might have to. You might have to. Uh, you might have to make an appearance on the uh, on the Cash Creek Web Podcast episode and talk about the uh, the Bobby Creek monster. Yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, look up more. But I, you know, as soon as I said a Sasquatch to somebody, uh, you know, because he's the hide and seek champion of the world. Absolutely. <laughs> so, man, so the three of you are, and and is this are these webisodes only on the YouTube, or can they be found in audio form anywhere? No, it's just YouTube. Why don't you slip them on audio, and I'm going to give a, a, a shout-out to, to Anchor.fm. Grab the audio and just throw it out there, man, just as more content. Anchor.fm is free. Free. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, pass the word on. We'll see if we can do that. Yeah, and, and they'll pay you. Uh, if you do a little 30-second spot for them, they'll pay you about oh. a penny a listen just for just um, for giggles. I could use a few pennies. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, you know, beyond that, man, that, that way, it, you know, me driving around, I listen to podcasts all the time. And I'd love to listen to three guys chit chat about music and, and Bigfoot and NASCAR and whatever. You yeah. know, I, I yeah. like that. I, I'm, you know, I, I've listened to the Rogan. Eh, okay. Yeah. It's, it's the same show. He's trying to get you to, to do some CBD and, and smoke right. some pot with him. Hey, that sounds great. Okay. Next. Uh, oh, same yeah. show. And he's going to talk about MMA. Okay, next, right? You know, not no, no yeah. hating. The man has opened open doors for sure, for sure. Oh, sure, absolutely. And and uh, you know, I, I I appreciate what he's accomplished. That's for sure. For you know, he's sure. managed to figure out how to make a living at it. So God bless him. Although he he got taken off of my uh, my podcast software. Uh, he's exclusively on Spotify. I don't know. I I feel like that might have hurt his numbers. But uh, you know, that's what you get when you're. When you're signing uh, on to a label, signing on to somebody big. That's it. I'm sure he's making it up somewhere else. I'm sure of it. So or you know, back to uh, signing labels, signing signing up with people. Uh, you you made some some mixtapes. Nothing that you would call uh, signing up. You had management of some kind that was getting you shows. Booking agents, right. I guess, right. is more the the word. But did you uh, have another manager besides? Uh, the parents, besides, besides no, family, that that was it, and then from there, it basically became us. Oh, so you're managing you know? yourselves? No it's formal right. management? Nope, nope. And then you're. But if anybody out there is listening, we'd love to have somebody else make those phone calls. <laughs> you, you, you know, <laughs> hey, look, as a DJ, when I started in uh, officially in '88, I mean '86. You know, before that, I was the high school DJ. Hey, bring your records over. We're having a party. Right. Okay, you're going to help? Sure, we'll help. No, they did not help. You, right. you know, you know I'm, <laughs> I'm dragging my speakers, my you know, uh -huh. turntable. Yeah, okay, and my records. But um, 86, I did my first wedding. I started on the radio. I'm going to call that my first year. And, and I remember, you know, I it used to be two turntables and a microphone. Now it's lights. Now it's, uh, you, know, you know, your speaker system. You you know your right. uh, TV screens for karaoke and and, right. and the the equipment just gets bigger and and now I'm doing my my own social media my own advertising. You right. have to be more than the singer. Why 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 can't I just concentrate on writing songs and singing the songs? Yeah, that's you know that's a good question. But I also think that's um, that's the other side of the coin with the uh, the age of the internet. Um, you don't, as an emerging artist, you don't necessarily need that big name label anymore to to get traction. Yeah. Uh, yes, you are so correct. The internet can be used for good. That's the third time I've said that on this podcast. And, right. You know, it's not an evil thing. And a lot of times, uh, okay, here's something to quote uh, Joe Rogan, post and ghost. Don't look at the, at the comments. Don't worry about the comments. Post about your show. Post the show you just did, maybe a little right. clip or a snippet, and then and move ghost. on. Move on. Don't worry move about what people one. say. I mean, unless they're saying good things, always take the good things well, and a little well, bit. Of criticism. Sure, but you, I, you can't. You just can't worry about that stuff. You have to do what you do for you, especially when it comes to music. If you're not writing and playing songs that you like, uh, then just stop. Yeah, there's no point to it. If your heart and soul's not in it, 
then it's going to show. It's going to show in the product. All right. James Blaylock, Cash Creek, Silver Creek, a sad time. You break up. Why? Why you break up? You've been going for almost 10 years. Why? <laughs> you know, um, it, it was uh, just kind of the next, the next step, you know. Um, Chemo took the leap and moved out to Nashville first. Um, and Monty and I stayed back in, uh, in California. And he and I continued to work together in other little bands and that, that kind of thing. Uh, Chemo uh, managed to land himself a, a couple pretty good day jobs out there. Uh, and, uh, after about probably about another 10 years of that, uh, he called us up out of the blue and said, Hey, I want to start this new project and you're the guys I want. That is sweet, man. Remembering how we all came back years. together after all these years, he remembers, Hey, those cats were pretty cool to work with. Were you the first call? Well, Do you know you're the first call? Probably not. <laughs> 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 Dang it. <laughs> you know, I want to believe that you were the first call, man. Well, probably not. Um, you know, it's uh we have known each other for so long that we are more like brothers than than friends. Okay. You know, I mean that's that's really what it, it and that's what it's about. And I can't imagine doing this and not having those other two guys involved in some capacity. Well, you didn't go to college, but did, did anybody take any formal music? Does anybody know how to read music? No. No reading music, all playing by ear. Tabs? All playing by ear. Tabs, yeah. You know, you, you, you have the, the Nashville number system that everybody learns. I've uh, heard of to, that. To, I talked to a, yeah, a cat chart. in uh, northeast Arkansas, Lance Curtis. He said something about the number system. Explain that right. again. What's the number system? Oh boy, I, I'm actually because I'm a drummer. I don't really use it that much, uh, but basically, it's a number system that corresponds to the chords that you play and and the order that you play them in. Instead of having trying to read music tablature, you know, individual music notes, um, you can say the song is in the key of A and it starts on the one, and then it goes to the three and the five or the or the two and the four or something like that. And it's easy for guys to to just chart it out on a single sheet of paper real quick you, you know you doing the counting system just kind of it reminded me of the ramones every one of their songs started off one two three four <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep so okay so there's a whole nother system that makes it easier for i'm guessing guitarist bassist maybe not right. so much the drummer yeah. the rhythm section i guess is always the rhythm section you're always setting the pace uh, right now when you're doing okay here's another thing yeah, I want to ask so now, you we'll, now yeah, we'll use you know I'll, I'll use the chart system to follow along in the song to know okay. to, to know where the song is going but it doesn't necessarily correspond to the notes that I play okay but uh, the rhythm section sets the tempo uh, when you're doing covers do you are you very conscious of the tempo because I've heard from other bands that if you don't play it at that exact tempo, because you're trying to pick up the energy and maybe you'll play a, a song that was slower, faster, so you can get more energy out of it. But that's not, it, it's going to off put people. It doesn't always work that way. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there's some songs that you can, if it's got a quick tempo, you might be able to bump it up a couple of notches a little bit. You know, and some of that might just come from the energy that you're getting from the crowd. You know, you, you, you get a little hyped up and you tend to play everything a little bit faster. Um, but uh, tempo is critical to the structure of the song. Yeah, that scene in uh, that thing you do, uh, was it uh, uh, where he picks up the, 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 the actual song, that thing you do, it was like a ballad or it was slower. Right. And the drummer set the pace. Pop, 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 right. pop, and made it faster. Yeah. And it kind of upset the singer, the songwriter, but it worked out so much better. It became a hit in that tempo. So songs do work at that tempo. Although I've seen right. a lot of songs that, that are getting done, you know, lounge singer style. That's become, right. you know, the thing where you'll kind of slow it down uh, and, right. and, and make it into a lounge song. What do you think of that? Right. Well, you know, I mean, it's, it's a fun twist. You know, you can do a lot of fun stuff with different songs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know? Okay. So back to, uh, uh, you know, when Silver Creek breaks up and turns into Cash Creek, 
what year was this? Uh, so we're talking about 2008, I think. So probably more than a full 10 years you had been, you know, right. doing other, other projects and, right. uh, you know, working other, other things, uh, right. with, uh, well, what, what kind of other projects all country in, uh, the Northern of California? Yeah. I've, I, I've only played country music, you only. know, I don't. I don't really play much of anything else. Yeah. Uh, I love all kinds of music, but okay. I am a country music guy. That's, that's what I play. That's my wheelhouse. You know, I can, I can play some pop stuff, you know, I mean, you, you, you learn the Eagle songs and you learn some of the other stuff that's out there. Some of the, the more popular pop stuff, but, um, but for the most part, I, you know, my whole music career has been country music. Hey, you're in California. You have to learn the Eagles, man. You have to. You, you it's, do. It's yes. a law. Yeah. It's, a, it's part of the union, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? It's, it's, it's probably written in the union bylaws. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So cool, man. Uh, and, yeah. uh, dude, James Blaylock. So from 2008 to now, what have you yeah, been doing? It's been, it's been Cash Creek. What have you been doing? Uh, what kind of gigs? Uh, is it besides that, that first Wednesday of the month there in Nashville? What else are you doing all over the all over to entertain the people. Oh, we've been, yeah. I mean, we, we go again, we'll go anywhere. We're, uh, we do a lot of openings. Um, we've, uh, we know, you know, we've been blessed that we, through the course of, of our musical history, we managed to make a lot of, of relationships on the business side. So we know a lot of good promoters and a lot of, uh, of good booking agents and they, they get us in front of, uh, you know, as opening acts at different fairs and, uh, different concert uh, venues and that kind of stuff. So we're, you know, again, we're all over the place uh, up until last year when everything got shut down. Ah, nobody wants to talk about last year. Last year yeah. stunk. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> there was yeah. whole, whole months when I did zero and it was, it was nice when you began this podcast with, Hey, we have a show. On Wednesday, I want to say, yes, you yeah. got a show. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. You know, but were you making, are you making records since 2008 or you, are you writing and, and putting stuff down and where are you recording this stuff? If you are uh, always, we, we have our own, uh, we have our own recording studio that we do. Uh, still that, at that Kimo's mom's house. In. What's that? Still at Kimo's mom's house. No, not at, <laughs> it's actually at Kimo's house, not his mom's house anymore. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> he upgraded, <laughs> but yeah, but, but, you know, but, uh, funny, she still, you know, she, she lived with him for a long time in Nashville. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I guess you could say it was still in mom's house. You know? Oh, feeling of uh, nostalgia, man. Mom, <laughs> mom was up on it, man. She was good. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. It, that That's fantastic. That, Hey, she, yeah, but we have, we have our own studio there that we, uh, we do our stuff and we're always, uh, we're always looking at recording new stuff and uh, searching out new songs and writing. And, and if it's not, if it's not our stuff, then we're, we're working with other artists. Yeah. I mean, to, to write everything yourself and you know, how many tracks do you have out there in the world uh, that, that you've recorded and, and were they all recorded at chemo's studio? What's, is there a name of that studio that can he, will, is he open to inviting other uh, talents to we, come in and we record? just call it the, we just call it the cash creek compound okay uh uh yeah i mean yeah we we our our studio is open for anybody else that wants to you know come in and uh and and uh pay to lay down some tracks we got we have great contacts with with studio musicians who can give them top-notch quality product and uh you know in in my my honest humble opinion as a producer i think kibo's got some of the best ears in the business Fan. Fantastic. See, that's one thing that you got to, uh, as a singer songwriter or a songwriter, you got to give up a little bit of that creativeness. You know, you give them mm -hmm. something you, here. I, I, I made a little demo and now I guess on your iPhone, but it used to be, you know, on a tape deck, I made this right. little demo and you hand it to an engineer who, who's been doing it over and over and over and they clean it up for you. But the four of you, do you, and uh, is it a four piece band now or a three piece? Uh, it's a, well, it's predominantly a four piece. Okay. Cause I got yeah, James, always, Kimo and Monty. Always the four of us, but, uh, you know, whenever we go out on the road, we will always try and bring out a, a couple of uh, side guys with us. Um, we, uh, will use, um, uh, Steve, Steve Pepper has been playing keyboards for us at some, at these last couple of, uh, Cash Creek club live shows. He's the piano player for, uh, a little country band called Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. We've never heard of uh, them. Yeah, uh, and then um, 
whenever we get the uh, get the chance to have the amazing uh, Vic Lawson come out and play pedal steel guitar with us. He he actually lives in Nashville, so he he comes out and will and will play with us uh, whenever he has a chance. Uh, we we'll, we always try and bring out uh, a keyboard and a, and a pedal steel player with us. Well, it's nice that you're giving these kids a break. You know, get you know, like uh like when uh who who was it? Oh, when Kanye gave Paul McCartney a break and and yeah. and, and, and put him on his song. You know, yeah. Uh, you know these kids, they need help. You know. Yeah. They do. Somebody's <laughs> got to look out for the youngsters. My gosh, you know, and it's <laughs> nice to to have to work with greatness. That's an yes. The, you were talking about the music uh, business; it can be tight. I remember when I was a yeah. young DJ. A lot of times, other DJs would step on you. All right, maybe right. you could make you know three hundred bucks on this gig, and here's a Weasley DJ comes in. I'll do it for two fifty. Right. Another one. Right. I'll do it for two hundred. I'll do it for right. one fifty. And it, it it puts a demise on the industry. If you have bands, right. hey, you know, the band commands a thousand bucks. Oh, but they'll do it for eight hundred or six hundred. It, it, right. It, you have to you you and that's always the, the battle that a lot of artists face on a on a day to day basis. You you got to make money to pay your bills. Let's face it. You you got to eat. You got to pay your rent. You got to you know. Uh, and a lot of these people have families. They got families they have to support. Um, you know, we've all got families that we have to support. So you you do have to find out where your floor is. You know, I will I will in certain circumstances work for this because on the plus side, I'm going to get something else out of it. Oh yeah, opening you know, up for a, a big band, right? Uh, or, you know, or in front of 50, working with people. a certain promoter in a certain venue that you've been trying to get in, and that kind of thing. So every now and then you gotta, you know, you gotta, you gotta take one in the shorts. But, um, but, uh, you know, I have a, I have a saying that I that I always say uh, all the time, especially to other artists. Nobody works for free. No. Nobody works for free. You should. You have a value. Maintain your value. Absolutely, man. You know, oh, you need exposure. I've been exposed for 30 years now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, it's the funniest thing because in the music business, that's the only time you ever hear that. Mm. You know, you wouldn't go down to the, your local pizza restaurant and say, hey, I'm throwing a party. Can you bring free pizzas so that people learn about your business? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, and there's, okay, yes, there's another thing. Uh, charitable causes. Yes, you should give sure, back. Absolutely. Yes. You should give yeah. back. I mean, any right. any charitable causes that you've been involved in that you really appreciate? Absolutely. Actually, uh, yeah, we work. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a, a product plug here. Hit me. For a, uh, it's an energy drink called Bulletproof Energy. Okay. And it is owned and run by uh, a gentleman by the name of uh, Bob Dolkey. And he is a uh, an Air Force vet. And he started a uh, charity that provides entertainment to um, uh, injured uh, injured troops who are in the recovery stage. Mm. Uh, for a lot of these guys and and ladies, uh, when they're uh, when they're wounded, and a lot of them have some pretty traumatic injuries. Uh, they're stuck in these in these uh, different military hospitals. It can't go anywhere, and you can only watch so much TV. So he he goes out of his way to bring entertainment to those people, and we've been lucky to be involved with him and uh, and been able to travel to several different bases and uh, and provide entertainment for a lot of these people, and it's really gratifying. Man, that's good for your soul. It's good for your heart, man. It is. It is. They so truly appreciate that somebody came to them uh, just just because. Yeah. Ah. Oh, see, and, and I'm I'm glad you gave shout outs. I'm glad you give plugs. Give credit where credit is due, man. That's what. This is your podcast. You tell the people about the people that have helped you along the way, and in turn, the people that you are helping, the the the, the places that that you like giving your your effort, your time. Right. Uh, to, right. To and people. we've all, uh, all of us in our families have. Uh, well, my, you know, my wife is an Air Force vet. I have a son who um, is in the Army. Uh, Kibo's dad was in the Air Force. Um, uh, Monty's dad, I believe, was in the Navy. Uh, so, you know, we, we're surrounded by people who are either in the service or have been in the service. And so we, we appreciate what goes into that, that decision. I know it's a necessary thing because we, we fight, but 
I, I don't want to have any wars anymore. I'm four square again. There, I said it. Uh, uh, no more uh, wars. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> you know, if we you can, know. if we can send troops over to maybe go build a house, hey, that'd be fine. Right. That'd be hey, fine. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and and it would be done quick, and it would be really well built. Man, the Seabees are, are uh, talking about the Navy, right? The I guess their construction right. battalion. Uh, I, yep. I, the, down in um, after Hurricane Andrew in 92, I was on the fire department in Key Largo. And I remember uh, that we were using, I, I carried a, a, a that same 20-mile stretch. I carried a chainsaw, just cutting trees right. out of the way, cutting trees out of the way. And then here comes the Navy with a, 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 a big, giant uh, front-end dozer. Now, right. where, where were you three hours ago? I'm walking up to you know, 20 miles here. <laughs> right, right. But yeah, those, those cats, uh, the, the armed forces are a well-oiled machine. Uh, where were, right. where were we, they at the Capitol? We appreciate on? everything that they do for us. <laughs> where were they at the Capitol on uh, January 6th? No, I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm well, kidding. <laughs> Current don't, events. don't make me put my tinfoil hat on. You know? Oh, I'm doing it, man. I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like conspiracy theories. But, you know, and Sasquatch going back to your Cash right. Creek Club. Uh, yeah, I mean, shoot, yeah. you're 55 episodes deep already in that thing, and yeah. I'm, that's fantastic yeah. that three guys can find so much to talk about. So that tells me that you have a lot of history, and those are the guys in the band, right? The the three yeah. guys that you sit on the couch. Yeah, uh, where's the yeah. fourth guy? But he's busy. Okay, he's busy. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, Jason man, shows up every now and he'll. He'll usually show up with his wife, and they'll come in and do a song or two. You know, when we have when we have a musical artist on, you know. But uh, uh, Jason Roller is he's got you know he's got his own production company, and he's got uh, like I said, he and his wife are on uh, a bluegrass label together. So they're you know they're busy. They they've got their own life that they uh, that they have to manage as well. And, and he we're lucky enough that he he squeezes us in in between. Man, that's he, it. Sounds like he's bet on himself. And he's put that music thing full time. A lot oh, of guys have to keep a day job. Yeah. yeah, a lot of yeah. guys have to have to do that that uh, day job to keep the insurance going. And especially guys like you and me that got families. I mean, you know, first you were talking about your son, and then you forgot about the other. Oh yeah, I got other kids too. They didn't get oh, yeah. COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, we got four so many. Boys. We, my <laughs> wife and I have been blessed with four boys, and we had our first grandson last year. So look at you. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. Uh, you know, our, our oldest son is actually 30 <sighs> and then they go down from there and we've got our youngest will be graduating from high school this year. So, um, it's, it's interesting to see them going through these different phases, uh, and seeing where, you know, where their careers take them and, and how their families evolve and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's a good, it's a, it's a great part of life to be living. It's amazing getting older. It's nice to be married. It's nice to produce kids as well. My oldest yeah. child just gave me grandchild number two over the last yeah, see, month. Congratulations. So, you know, a mazel tov, you know, and all that kind of yeah. thing. Uh, but yeah. man, you know, and then, but families, families could stop you from, uh, from, from touring so much, you know, that you give up a lot as a touring musician. Including you family. do. It's, and it's a, it's a balancing act that you're constantly, uh, working on, you know, because, you know, you're, like you said, you're missing, you're missing birthdays and you're missing, um, Thanksgivings and you're missing, uh, you know, all this other stuff that that's important to your family. And somewhere along the way, you gotta, you gotta figure out how to balance it out. Any of the kids or the family, uh, the, the, the wife or the boys, uh, having an interest in music coming out on the road with you? Not in my family. No, not um, no, <laughs> no, not at all. Not even no, a little bit. No. But uh, Kibo's son, uh, Jackson, he's, uh, Kibo has two boys. Uh, Jacob is his oldest. Does, uh, he produces uh, EDM music. Woo. Yeah, he's got his own. He's, got his, he's a DJ and does, you know, plays the raves and some of the bigger uh, rave festivals and stuff. He's got a pretty good following going on right now. Well, give a shout out uh, if you remember the name. But, you know. Uh, DJ Ish, I think. I-S-H. DJ Ish, I think, is his name. I know doing the clubs in Miami, when I was doing like the EDM uh, nights, uh, it, I would try to keep uh, all the music at 128 or 135 for like four hours. And, and the people right. would go, is that the same song you've been playing <laughs> for four hours? <laughs> doom, doom, doom. Doom, right. doom. It, nope, you know, it's the beat that gets you moving. Yeah. It, you know, you keep it at 135 the whole night and you're like, dude, you know, it's, it's right. like a challenge for me 
but it's you know it's fun for them because they've been keeping the same beat the whole night. That's pretty freaking right. cool. Right. So he yeah. So he's got Jacob who's doing uh, the EDM music, and then uh, his other son Jackson uh, is going to where is he going? I think he's at Middle Tennessee State, uh, and he is uh, he's in their music production program there, and he uh, plays. He's also a, a singer songwriter. He we've released a couple of his singles for him on our on our label. Uh, Jackson Forrest, you can look him up. He's got a couple of couple of pretty good songs. He's a youngster out there, um, and uh, he's more the uh, uh, country pop Americana type feel. Hey, don't put yourself in a box. Just play whatever you know. You know Taylor Swift. They they the, right. her label kept saying, "Oh, you need two country songs on this one." No, I don't, I'm not doing country this week, you know, or this month, right. uh, this time, yeah, you know. So she had to break out from those labels. Man, don't limit yourself. Yeah, some- yeah. Jackson's young; he's got time on his side right now, so he's he's still trying to figure out what his sound is. Fantastic. You know? All right, so you bragged very on, talented young man. You bragged on other people's kids. Yeah, brag on your kids a little bit. What are they, what are they doing? Your offspring, uh, the thirty year old and such. Uh, they're great. He's uh, he's working on becoming a firefighter. Um, like I said, he he gave us our first grandson, so we're you know right now he can do no wrong. Yeah. Uh, our second son, Jake, he's married. Yeah. He's got a beautiful wife. He's the one in the army. Oh, it's cool. uh, our third son, Austin, um, graduated from San Jose State University, and he is uh, he is learning to code now. <laughs> but he, wasn't but that primarily, the hashtag? He's a writer. That was the hashtag for the coal miners. Learn to code. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But he uh, he's uh, he's a writer. He does stand-up comedy, and he wants to be a uh, like a sitcom writer. Hardest you know? job in the world. I right. tried stand-up right. over the years several times. Fell flat on my face. Yeah, uh, you know. he's uh, he's actually got a pretty pretty decent following out there. He, well, he did until COVID hit, you know. But he's uh, he's made his inway with some of the uh, the larger, more popular uh, comedy clubs around the the California Bay Area and down in Los Angeles. So so he was doing pretty well with it. Yeah, it's amazing. I, you know, I, I listen to these podcasts in the comedy store. And you could see so many famous people on a Tuesday night just working out their right. stuff. Uh, right. Yeah, that's a that's a nice job and a nice community that he's getting into. Uh, I'm kind yeah. of excited for him, and I and I hardly know about him except for just well, now. look look him up. His name's Austin Blaylock. He'll he'll have some stuff out on YouTube. Austin Blaylock. Now these kids are. Yeah. are that's the other thing is they're they're doing YouTube shows and. And Zoom mm-hmm. shows and selling mm-hmm. tickets somehow, doing those mm-hmm. kind of shows. So, and right. I think what was it? Uh, Bert uh, Kreischer is doing drive-in shows. Right. You right. Know. Yeah, we've seen quite a few artists doing drive-in shows. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, uh, yeah, things things you have to do to break out. Uh, you know, because of of circumstances like the COVID nineteen last year. Right. So from two thousand eighteen uh, or what? Sorry, two thousand eight. Uh, how many albums have you put out and, and where can people find those things? Um, so we've put out eight, I think eight albums. Wow. We're putting one out about one a year every now. And, yeah. About one a year. Um, and they can find them all on our website, our website, cash Creek band.com. Yeah. Either the website or the web seat, either one cash, either one. Yes. Yeah. Cash and, Creek uh, band. And of course, all, it's all available on, uh, uh, iTunes, CD baby, uh, uh, Spotify, wherever wherever you get your music, you can find our stuff. Well, it's a great website. Who built that thing for you? It tells everything you want to know, including, of course, on the top of the fold, your social media. You got your right. your Facebook and your Twitter. You need an Instagram. Right. Where's your Instagram? We do have it. We do have Instagram, but I, I don't know why there's not an Instagram uh, link up there. We okay. do have Instagram. Okay, well, I'll, I'll probably find yeah. that. Is it all Cash Creek at Cash Creek Band? I'm sure it is. Okay, I'll look. I'll look for that there and put that in the show notes. But uh, yeah. you know, uh, what do that's you... the that's the one piece of social media that I just, for whatever reason, I just can't get into Instagram. It's uh, maybe it's because I'm old. I don't know. <laughs> it just doesn't work for me. You know. Well, I do the big four. I just like I said, 52 years old. Just turned that last Sunday, and it was uh, it's uh, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. The the big four. Right. You know, haven't broken out to the Snapchat or the. TikTok or any of the other stuff. Right, I, right. I have enough trouble keeping up. But Instagram is cool because it, if if you t- uh, tag on Instagram, it'll hit your Twitter and your Facebook at the same time. One stop right. shop. Right, and well, I know 
uh, I think chemo usually handles most of that stuff when we're, when we're out live, you know, if we're doing a show or whatever, we'll post, uh, you know, pre-show stuff or post-show stuff and it'll hit all of our, all of our social media feeds. Excellent news. Okay. I did find your Instagram. Excellent. Well, I'll make sure that I put that out there and make sure that, uh, everybody knows where to go. There's also little snippets of your Cash Creek Club um, um, YouTube podcast. Right. Hopefully, you get it out there. Uh, use that anchor thing. It's free. Free. Take the we'll audio. Throw let it me, out uh, there. Let me uh, just bring up one other thing. that um, Please. The uh, Cash Creek Club, lo- Club live shows are also um, being recorded uh, live, and uh, they are on a station called AIM Country, which is streamed on Roku devices. Oh my! Uh, Excellent. So I believe you can you can look up AIM Country A I M Country, um, and it's a streaming service that's that's through Roku, and you can uh, you can catch the uh, the shows live uh, after after we do post production mix. So many different avenues uh, that you can get your your stuff out there. As an independent artist, uh, do you even need a record label? Do you need a company? At some point, yes. Okay. Yes, at some point you at least need a partnership with one of the one of the bigger labels, just because they have the infrastructure. Ah, um, okay, you, you know, once you get once you get to that point where you know the business has decided that you're going to make money with or without them, that's usually when you you know you start getting entertained with with these offers. <laughs> That's usually what you'll see. Yeah, because they don't have to do any work to push you a little bit forward. You know. Yeah, yeah. You've mitigated a lot of the risk for them. Correct. Well, speak, man. Speaking of, I'm such a dummy. I didn't even talk about uh, Jana Johnson. Uh, she's the one that put this together and got us uh, talking. Uh, what she is, is such a wonderful lady. Oh, what is Jana Johnson doing for you? You know, she she does just a lot of promo work for us. That's fantastic. You need you know, somebody she, in your corner. Somebody right. just, yeah. yeah, she, uh, you know, she calls up radio stations and, and, uh, different promoters and, and she, uh, she's always letting us know, uh, she's kind of got her, her finger on the pulse in, in that, uh, in that, uh, Western Kentucky, central Kentucky area. And she lets us know where we, where we should be seen. Fabulous. Fabulous. James Blaylock, Cash Creek, Cash Creek band, Cash Creek club. I, I think the, you know, definitely the, the way to find it is that at, cash creek band and you pretty much find it everywhere put that on the googles right. and uh, and you'll get it you'll find it uh, the main thing is the cash creek band.com website and that right. pretty much says it all there's i mean you're, i'm looking at a, at a glamour shot of uh, of you playing the drums uh, just all pretty beard all trimmed up just gorgeous man <laughs> uh, looking like a star i love it <laughs> But uh, you're too kind. Uh, well, I'm going to give you uh, as we uh, roll this thing into the garage. Uh, this is your your time to give shout outs to any last people that have helped you out over the years. Any any shout outs you want to give? You know, uh, uh, the biggest shout out I, I can give out is to my family, you know, and to uh, to Monty's family, Kimo's families. It's it's, uh, uh, you know, music is when you're involved in the music business, it's it becomes a lifelong passion. Uh, and just the support from, from family over the years. Oh yeah. That's, that's it. You know? And then, you know, we've got, we made a ton of friends in the business and those people know who they are. Um, you know, we, we appreciate them and and love on those people every chance we can get. Well, I mean, as, uh, uh, you've got eight albums worth of music out there. That's a lot. That's very prolific, man. Uh, It is. And the last album that we put out had, uh, it's called duality and it's kind of where we went a little bit, we went a little bit crazy. crazy. Um, one side is like solid gold eighties and nineties country, just great stuff in our wheelhouse. And then the other side of it, it gets a little off in the weeds a little bit. We get a little experimental with some stuff. Um, so, you know, take a listen to it. We've had, um, uh, one of the, the, the first single that we released off of that album, um, went uh uh number one on the uh, on the european charts for us so um uh, and i'll be danged if i can remember the name of the song right now <laughs> nah no worries at all man people, people got to find you uh, you know they already know where to go uh online and your websites and such but uh man you've given so much music out there already and uh, what do you see on the horizon more music 
you know, uh, ideally, uh, this, uh, cash Creek club life thing takes off and, uh, it's, uh, a- along with, uh, aim country, uh, uh, the aim country music channel on Roku. It's, uh, also being, uh, shot and produced for the Nashville, uh, country television network, I believe is what it's called NCTN, I believe. Um, and they're hoping to, uh, to get that out on television regu- uh, as a regular television show. Well, I talked to the cats from Mercy Shine uh, just a couple days ago, and they had nothing but great things to say about you. Do you do a lot of shows with them? Uh, we haven't done a lot of shows with them. We've worked with them a few times. Okay. J- Jason and Matt are a couple of fantastic guys. Yeah, and I think they've got a bright future um, in the in this business if they can, you know, if they keep writing and, and putting out the material like they have. Well, they love you guys for sure, uh, and and getting to Nashville is only that one time a month. Is that all the all the time you actually have to go over there for that one show because you have all your own equipment at your place. I fly in and out all the time. All the time. Okay. So what other things do you do over there? You know, if it's, if, if it's not playing, then the the three of us are basically, you know, running, running the label as well. So we're, we're working with the other artists that we're trying to bring up. We're uh, on the phone constantly talking to promoters and, and management, uh, other management providers. Always, you're always working the business side of it. It, that part never ever stops. Well, it can't be too hard to get them to go to Northern California. <laughs> uh, well, actually, it's it's uh, a bit expensive to pick that circus up and move it. You know, that's that's kind of the way you got to look at it. It's uh, the old days of throw everything in a in a a ten passenger van and roll down the freeway. Uh, those days are long gone. You you got to be a a full show now. You got to you basically got to be able to to. Uh, set up and show up all in one stop you ready to close this thing out yeah uh yes i can i remember the song it's called my one and only weakness my one and only weakness all right i usually finish these things out with last words for the people um you know i don't want this to be the last time we talk if you have some other stuff that you want to promote over the next you know whatever half a year another year down the line stay in touch come on back i I invite you to cook to uh Come in on our web podcast episode. Let's see if we can work something out there. <laughs> I love the the words, man. When people mash up <laughs> words and songs together, right. web podcast right. episode. Then hey, get, bring us to Conway. We would love to come to Conway, Arkansas. Uh, you don't want to go to Conway. Go to uh, Little Rock. <laughs> Let's go to Little Rock. There's Let's even songs it. about that. But you can you can in, we'll we'll come down with uh, us and uh, you know three or four of our artists and uh, and you can MC. You know, I kid, I kid. I love Conway. Uh, yeah, I. I I got uh, brought to Conway because I married a hillbilly. So, uh, you know, I, well, I, she made me leave the Florida Keys, sunny South Florida. So, uh, you know, it's got to be love. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, though. Bro, let's go to Conway. Let's, let's do it. a show for Conway. Why let's not? Let's do it. Hey, I, I'll, t- I'll bring you to the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. They, that's a pretty big room, man. I get to do it every, work. every Friday night. You can do it on Saturday. No problem. Uh, that that would be great. Like I said, we'll bring down three or four artists, and we'll uh, we'll put on a, a great show for the people. Look at you! All right, James Blaylock, uh, Cash Creek. Let's uh, let's do this last word for the people. This could be words that you live by, words that you heard a long time ago, or just whatever pops into your head at this moment in time. James Blaylock, Cash Creek. Last words for the people. I just want to thank everybody out there for giving me the opportunity to do this for a living. Cause without people coming to shows, without people listening to podcasts and, and radio stations and buying music, still uh, buying t-shirts, you know, just, just supporting your, your bands that you love. Um, that's what keeps us alive and moving. And so I'm, I'm so grateful and, and thankful for that. So thankful to all those people out there that, that are, that do that, that kind of stuff for us. Well, there you have it, party people. James Blaylock, the Cash Creek Band. Man, they've been doing it for a long time. I think they got the groove down. I think they do. They got eight albums worth of music for you to listen to, to make your ear holes all happy. Yeah, (laughs) all that good country music. And just country music, baby. And not, I think they step out of the genre. As he was explaining on that last album, they kind of slip a little bit out of the genre, a little bit, but it's still the heart is country. Yeah, you're going to hear it right there. Cash Creek Band. Look them up at Cash Creek Band. Put that in your Google. All the links are in the show notes. But if you can't make it to the show notes, at Cash Creek or Cash Creek at Cash Creek Band is the way to find them. 
everywhere at Cash Creek Band. And uh, thank you so much, James Blaylock, Jim Blaylock, for chit chatting with me for the last little bit. I appreciate you being on the What Makes You Famous podcast. Now, you, if you, I'm turning my attention to you, would like to tell your story, I encourage you to give me a call, 501 470 6386, or email info at radiowhat.com. That's it for me. It's Keys Dan, radiowhat.com, DJ Little Rock.com. Peace. I'm out of here.